uh, now I'm going to talk a bit about James Manoon. He uh, rolled a trio, um, sort of fame. Uh, came out of Leeds College of Music. Um, one of these guys that you know from year one is going to be a, a mega star, you know, and, and actually change the way um, people actually see music. Um, works with a guy called Chris Sharkey, um, and the both of them. I, it was only last month I went to actually watch them do a duo. Um, Chris was on laptop, um, James was on sax. I, I actually was blown away by the actually the way they actually spoke to each other and where they actually got music uh, out of each other. So, so James is obviously a you know I'm a big fan of all his work he's, he's trying to do. Um, he again came in the shop and he was sort of watching me develop these horns. He saw me do the Pete one, he saw me do the Ed one, and then he's like, oh God, can I have a try? And he never ever thought I would turn around and say. I'm going to make you a home because he didn't think he was, uh, you know, in my wavelength or in my path of what I was actually trying to achieve. But what I'm trying to achieve is get the best British jazz musicians that are on the market at the moment to actually um, get them to do it. And then I work with Americans as well, like Jerry Bigonzi and, and uh, Noel Scott and guys like this. Um, but to start with, I just wanted to, to capture the British jazz sort of scene because I believe British jazz is the forefront of, of where the music's actually going forward. So James had tested all the horns and he, he was actually involved with a little bit of the development work that we're actually doing with it all. Um, what we did with James is I made him a horn um, and then we actually changed his mouthpiece setup as well. So he's on one of my mouthpieces that's actually on it now. So um, I think you'll see from the video uh, that he's actually doing now, you'll actually, he'll talk you through how we met and, and where we actually went with it all and you'll hear in his play, he's, he's a lot more, um, he's up and down the sax, so, but, 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 you know, he's like that type of player, so he's just wanting attack uh, rather than quality because he's mic'd up most of the time, so he's not wanting this big ballady sound, so his sax is, is um, I put a red brass neck uh, with a yellow brass body on it uh, and you'll, you'll hear it in his playing. So again, enjoy.
Hello, I'm James Mannering. I'm a saxophonist based in Leeds, UK. Um, I play in, in bands like Roller Trio and other projects, uh, as well as a sideman for a wide variety of people, everyone from pianist John Law to indie rock band Django Django. And um, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about my amazing saxophone. Um, this is a very special saxophone to me. I've um, wanted to get my hands on it for a long time, ever since I tried a very early prototype that um, Dave Walker had, had made years ago. Um, and, and since then, I've, I've, whenever I've been into the shop in Leeds, um, he's told me about his most recent innovation and I try it again and it's it's just even better than the last time I tried it and it's just got better and better over the years and it's it's been a, a, a it's been amazing to see that um and it's been amazing to be part of that process um so um in in the past I've played all sorts of different saxophones uh most recently I was playing a, a Salmon Mark 6 um, I, I owned another Mark Six before that, and uh, a balanced action before that, and I've had, I've, you know, kept my mind open with modern horns. I, I've tried plenty of Yamahas and Yanaga Sours and all sorts of horns, um, and they all felt like they were just trying to copy the vintage horns. But this one is a standalone horn. It 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 just it's just completely different, and it and um, and it's just perfect for me um, and what I do um, but to be fair I think once you've tried it you'll you'll probably think the same so um, firstly it's one body um, which gets it resonating and vibrating more and additionally we've got all this new innovative key work um, which also vibrates and resonates as well as looking really cool and making it a lot easier to play as well because um, uh, everything's smoothed out and you can get around the side keys a lot easier and um, we've also got little, just teeny little things like this thumb rest it's um, something very small but it just helps your wrist get round to them top side keys which is really good for what I do because I, I like to compose quite jumpy melodies that um, venture from the bell keys up, up to altissimo um, quite quickly so this is the red back and also this is a Morgan Fry mouthpiece it's quite new um, and it's designed to go with this horn. Uh, it's something to do with the height of the baffle, makes the intonation really well balanced throughout. Um, so sound-wise, it's just, it sounds huge. Um, it Honestly, I, I wish I still had my Mark VI so I, I could do a comparison of the two. But um, from the top to the bottom, it's, it's just really open and um, it just sounds massive. So. <laughs> Um, it's really good for just moving from subtone to really loud high stuff. <laughs> Um, 
as I was saying before, the jumping around the range is um, is really easy on this instrument as well. Really makes the bottom notes pop out, and um, but the the top range doesn't feel too tight. <laughs> Makes all the multiphonics nicely pop out. That one especially sounds pretty evil. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, it feels amazing to have finally found a horn that I've settled on, and you know, I can I can gig and practice and and write new music without thinking, oh, if only I had, maybe I should get this different saxophone or mouthpiece. Um, I don't feel like that anymore, and it and it really. Um, gets rid of that distraction from writing and, and playing. Um, so, thanks a lot, Dave. Uh -huh.